This is Equity One, Broadway's happy hour. Pour yourself a drink and join us as we chat about life, theater, and, and everything in between. I'm Elliot Maddox. And I'm Caleb Dickey. Join us for your Equity One. Yes, look at that Yay. artwork. Hey, cheers. cheers. Hi, Caleb. Hey, Elliot. <laughs> Welcome to this week's Broadway Podcast Network Happy Hour. I'm Elliot. And I'm Caleb. And we are the hosts of Equity One Broadway's Happy Hour. Uh, here on Broadway Podcast Network Happy Hour, we sit down with some of your favorite podcasters and chat with them. And we have a really special episode today. We got a full house. We full have. House. A, a bevy of beauties from Bleeding Love, the um, fabulous musical podcast that's on uh, the Broadway Podcast Network. We have the lyricist, Harris Duran, the producer, Katie Rosen, and then two of the performers, Annie Golden and Tony Vincent with us. And they're going to pop in soon yeah i know <laughs> here they come here Hi. we are Yay. we're here yes Hi. unless i forget the the among the many titles harris also directed bleeding love it's it's really a, quite an an undertaking um it's really really exciting like thanks so much for coming on the podcast thank you for having us oh my god it's exciting course. yeah uh, it's our pleasure. Do we want to? Do we want to bring in another one of the producers? We also have another one of the producers here. Steve Saparito is with us. Oh, come on in. Come, come on, on in, in Steve. Steve. Oh, just oh. kidding. <laughs> oh, not yet. He's he's planning something big for later. Um, <laughs> how are you all doing in this crazy time? Surviving, well, surviving, keeping busy with this, which has been taking up all of our time. <laughs> yes yeah. not only exactly. getting it all together but it it came out very recently now you can mm. now you can listen to it all in one one foul swoop wherever you it, get your podcasts binge that shit yeah shit? is this like a cursing zone or no Absolutely. Oh, yes. okay. and binge, and binge that shit and subscribe <laughs> rate and review yeah. <laughs> so that uh we can bump up the charts as always, <laughs> subscribe, rate, and review. We wouldn't our our listeners wouldn't do anything but subscribe, rate, and review here. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um. What What are you all uh, drinking with us today? I am having I'm having a Tom Collins. It's become my like oh. drink of choice. It's like so hot outside. I took a very sweaty walk today, and I was like, I need something refreshing. Is that a re a rent reference? <gasps> it's always a rent reference. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Yeah, Santa Fe. <laughs> I'm having, look, I'm about to open it. Oh, I didn't make it. Oh, I didn't make a good noise, but it's a lager. And this one is from Dayton, Ohio. It's a Trotwood lager. So, oh, oh local. Okay. Local, you know, support local. We love that. Harris? Mm -hmm. This is actually homemade limeade. It's, I apologize that it's non alcoholic. I have no, to I'm, oh, no. I'm but, impressed. But I, I made a limeade. I did it myself. I, I boiled water and sugar so it would melt. And then I wow. then I squeezed limes and here we are. You made your own simple syrup. Mm -hmm. That's and incredible. It was, it was simple. It really was. It, that it is, is. That's why they call it simple it's, syrup. I have simple syrup in my drink too. Ooh, what are you having? A gin gimlet. Oh. In my oh, fancy, that used to be my favorite. It's in my fancy cooler cup. So you keep these in the freezer and it always stays cold. Tell us about that cup. So this cup was given to me by my best friend, Beth Chamberlain, who is, um, she played Beth Rains on Guiding Light for 20 years. She's a pretty a phenomenal actress herself. And we drink martinis together and she gave this to me um, so that my, my martinis are always cold. I love a, a freezer specific glass. I mm -hmm. have a really nice rocks glass that like the rock, like the, the ice freezes in a diagonal in the glass. Oh, and yeah. it apparently like cools it better. Like it, it cools it while you drink it. It's really wow. nice. And yeah. it probably helps with the pour or something. Something. I don't know. Yeah. It was a lovely, I use it all the time. I'm, I'm one of those people that like drinks and doesn't know anything, but enjoys to drink. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It works whether you know how to do it or not. 
I know exactly. You can. It has the same effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Steve, do you want to join us? He wants in on the action. Hello. Another one of you guys. Nice to meet you. Nice Thanks meet so you much too. for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Steve, thank you for promoting Bleeding Love. It's like been an awesome, amazing journey for us. Um, uh, you know, Harris brought me into it, met Katie through it, and we've really become this crazy, like, uh, Brady Bunch kind of family, like all thrown <laughs> together. Um, and just really happy to have the opportunity to get it out on the Broadway Podcasting Network. Who knew that a global pandemic would be an amazing thing for us to get the I, It's <laughs> it's definitely it's I'm mean, we're gonna talk so much about the show. Um, but it the timing was uh I'm sure stressful and made things a little more difficult, but wow. You really, it's almost too good. I, yeah. I think I might might think you just did this on purpose. Like Bleeding Love <laughs> made coronavirus so that it would be as timely as it is. You know, was Harris, was Harris in China somewhere in January? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, I, you know, who knows? Only time will tell. Yep. Um, yep. Steve, are, are you are you having a, a beverage with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing a Manhattan, it's a <sighs> bullet Manhattan. Oh. So love bullet, bullet rye, rye or uh, rye or bourbon. Bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. Kentucky yeah, bourbon. Right. You know, I wasn't drinking bullet for a while because I I also managed Stephen Trask, who lives in Lexington. And on a trip, we drove to the bullet distillery on a Sunday, which was about an hour away. Mm -hmm. And we got there five minutes too late for the last tour. And they wouldn't let us in on the tour. So for a little while, I was off bullet, but it is good bourbon. So it's so good. You know, I'm from Lexington. I actually just came from Lexington, uh, spending a month and a half there. And it was such a great bummer that all of the distilleries were closed because it's my favorite yeah. thing to do when I'm home is just go on all the tours over but, and over. Yeah, I, I love Kentucky. I've spent a ton of time there. Oh, really? I made, yeah, I made a movie called Beauty Mark and we filmed uh, outside of Louisville, well, in and, downtown Louisville. And oh, Kentucky, yeah. Kentucky native oh, yeah. Laura Bell Bundy was yeah, in Laura, that, she's right? In, she's in my movie, yeah. Laura yeah. Bell's in my movie. She's I grew up, in, the movie, grew up yeah. in the same town, same dance oh. studio. Yep. Yes, yes. <laughs> Laura, yep. Laura, Laura Bell is amazing. The best, the best. She really is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love Kentucky. It was, it was, it's nice, yeah. always nice to be home, but it's, it's funny when, you know, in this time, it's like the things we love about like our places are kind of all like shut down and taken away. So it's like, oh, this is a lot, this is a little bit less fun when there's yeah. not all this it's exciting to do. stuff going on. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what's keeping you all entertained right now? Uh, you know, you've got Bleeding Love out there, of course, doing a lot of like, press and all of those things, keeping it, getting people listening. But uh, what are you doing when you're like sitting down with a cocktail, relaxing for the day? What are you watching? Are you guys watching We're Here? On yes. HBO? I have to watch the new episode. Uh, now I have to write it down or else I'll forget. Uh -huh. We're here. Like we're here, we're here, get used to it. Um, <laughs> it is like three drag queens from RuPaul. So it's, it's Bob the Drag Queen, Shangela, and... Oh, what's the third? Uh, Eureka O'Hara. Eureka, Eureka, and um, and it's it's sort of like um, what was that movie? Uh, the drag queen movie in the Priscilla Queen of the Desert. No, the the bad one. What was the bad one? Oh, the bad one. Yeah, the other one. It was like Priscilla, but um, oh, like oh. Um, Tu Wang Fu, Tu Wang Fu. It's sort of like Tu Wang Fu, where you have the drag queens and they go to the middle of nowhere and then they inspire the town. So it's real life, but they're going, but it's filmed like a documentary and it is like gut wrenching. Like it's such a beautiful, beautiful show, and I highly recommend it. Is, is it, it a documentary or not? I mean, it's it, reality TV is documentary, right? But mm -hmm. this feels more like a documentary yeah. film somehow. It's somewhere in between. Yeah, it feels like it's it's um I, I the only thing I can really like compare it to is Queer Eye, but it it feels so much more like evolved. Yeah, yeah, more more important. Well, because Bob the drag queen is just like grounded. They're all like, so good, mm -hmm. and they're like, like, we will handle your entire life problems, hold them in our hands, and cry with you. It's amazing. A lot of and great stories, like yes. really interesting people. A lot of like 
trans representation and interest, just interesting stories. Um, it's really, really worth a watch. Yeah. 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 I made my uh, senior film in college on drag queens. So I, uh, oh. yeah, I have like a unique fascination fascination with them. So I'm definitely going to watch. What was the title? God, I can't remember. It was so long oh. ago, <laughs> but I have it somewhere, but it's Send on, it uh, no, but it's on beta of, or something. I'm <laughs> <That's> old. <beta>. <laughs> well, I, I know I, I, uh, I had directed a documentary about Squeezebox, which was the rock and roll drag club in New York City for the 90s. Um, and there was a, a, a film festival that was interested in doing it as a retrospective. And they were like, well, what's your Vimeo? Like, send us your Vimeo link. And I'm like, because it was, we did it about seven or eight years ago. And I'm like, uh, we don't have a Vimeo link. And if I have to give you a list of all the the festivals it played in, I'm gonna have to fire up our MySpace page. <laughs> like I that's did, I, I made a short film like 10 years ago and I like about two years ago digitized it and put it up on Vimeo, but it's a process. It is. But I wanna answer your guys' question because my what I've been doing in my downtime is really sort of interesting because it, it relies on my two children. So I have a 12 year old daughter who's obsessed with Broadway. She's very much a tween fan and we saw Beetlejuice three times and thank you. It, yeah. Like, <laughs> so uh, it was too bad. Cause I, now that I meet you because she um, really wanted to go backstage, but um, <laughs> she, uh, yeah, of course. So anyway, so she decided she wanted to watch all the Marvel movies, not in release order, but in chronological order. So that's been her oh. quarantine viewing. And then my son, he's 15, but he, uh, he did Band of Brothers. So we started that like two nights. Band of Brothers was a great oh. thing for him to watch because it's like history, but it's beautiful. And like, it's so interesting. So it's so far from um, podcasting and Broadway and every, both of those are like so tangential. Yeah. It's a nice escape from all the other stuff from work. Right. Well, well right. Because otherwise, all day, every day is Bleeding Love and uh, the <laughs> Podcast Network. <laughs> all day, every day. Every day. It's, 24, 7. It's true. As you know. It has been the engine that's really made this thing go. It's uh, She's been the real heart and soul of the whole thing. I, it's been wonderful to watch her work too. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. It's always, um, it's always interesting. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize how, how much work and how much time it takes to get any project on its feet, um, especially a musical and especially one that, you know, faces uh, time challenges and, you know, you've got to figure out on your feet, like how to make things work. And um, it's it you really build a family with those people uh, mm -hmm. that you're creating something new with. It's funny. Um, I was actually saying to your to our future guest Tony that like it's weird to have this like um, intense theater bond of like rehearsal process and like going through the whole thing yeah. and never having met someone. Like we we've only I mean I've never even met Arthur and Jason who are the, two of the writers of the project. <laughs> like wow, we've only ever met on the on digital screen. Wow, that's I mean that's so now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we have to, I can't wait for this to be over so we can have a cast party finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, until we can finally have drinks with everyone. Yeah. Uh, like for real. We'll do this again, but like at Sardis. Speaking of, yeah. I think we're going to um Steve, for now, we're gonna take you out and we'll, we can bring you back in later, but we want to yeah. bring in uh Tony Vincent and Annie Golden. Ooh. Who are you know, let, let me just say this. this uh, the, the really great thing is that I'm old enough to have been a Shirts fan uh, way, way back in the day. Yes. And I've seen Annie play at Stevie GB's. And the last time I saw the Shirts play, I was randomly walking on the boardwalk in Seaside Heights, New Jersey, and at the bar on the beach. 
It said the shirts. And I was like, we're going in there to my friend. <laughs> and that was like 19. Yes. So it was very exciting for me to have Annie as part of this process. It's always exciting to get to kind of like make those moments and work with people that you've always enjoyed uh, seeing Absolutely. what they do. Yeah. All right. Have fun, guys. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Thank you, Steve. All right. Oh gosh, here. here we are. Ooh. Hi, guys. The gang Look at that hair. Hey, hey. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. What are you? Are you imbibing with us today? I'm gonna really throw you a curve here. <sighs> nice. <Yes. laughs> it's I have, interesting. I, I have two kids to you know contain with. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's interesting that you went for not only A and W but diet A and diet. Mm -hmm. I get the pleasure without you know we're in quarantine here. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know, the push and pull. Yeah, Make it last. I'm, I'm a big Barks fan myself. Okay, I can't find it here. I, I live in Nashville right now. So, oh, understood. Uh, but I'm with you. I'm Barks, right there with Barks you. Barks has bite. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Annie, thanks for joining us. Hi, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Elliot and Caleb. <laughs> we love your glasses. What are you drinking? I'm drinking. Well, I've been waiting backstage for so long. I might. <laughs> <laughs> Pinot Grigio on ice. Oh, yes. delicious! You know, you know, we have a rule here at Equity One, which is if your glass is never empty, it's still just one. <laughs> exactly. So mm -hmm. you keep on exactly. refilling. It's just one drink as long as you're not a. Right. We're we're so excited to have you. We I just finished listening to Bleeding Love today. Um, and it's, I'm so excited to get to talk to you all about it. It's really, really exciting. Great, really great work on it. It's really cool to have you all here. Um, what are you all, what's keeping you all entertained right now? What are you watching in this, uh, quarantine time? Annie, go uh, ahead. I had, I had a friend and a family member say, are you watching Gaga one night? And I said, I'm watching Casablanca. Yes. <laughs> oh, classic. Yeah. Turn to classic movies. I'm trying to ignore that this is happening. Mm -hmm. So I'm just to my mainstay of old, old movies, old TV shows. I just, I can't deal. I live in the past like Madame Floyd. <laughs> 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 Don't you shake your head? Yeah. Yeah, I got it a little closer than the last time we saw each other. <laughs> <laughs> Very in vogue Thanks. right now. Well, Tony, what are you inappropriate with our character in this show? It's very yeah. bleeding yeah. love. Skinhead, yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you What are you watching right now? This is going to sound really lame. Um, I'm an audio guy. I like making records, and I just I'm absorbing like the pretty intensive production tutorials right now. I know it's <laughs> it sounds really silly and corny, but no. I like if I'm if my brain isn't like challenged habitually. I feel, especially in a situation like we're dealing with now, I feel very lethargic. So mm -hmm. if I'm not like exercising and doing something cerebral, I feel like I'm like something's moving past me. Like I'm like being left behind and I, I just can't deal with that. Totally. I mean, I think we're all kind of figuring out like what our way of like just getting through the day is. And yeah. it, you know, sometimes it's just like sit on the couch and watch your movies. And sometimes it's like, I need to like learn something and do something today. And everyone's like balancing that, figuring it out for themselves. Um, mm -hmm. It's such a wild time, and, but that's not nerdy at all. I like constantly watch cooking videos. So that's, well, you know, I'm kind of, a, I'm kind of a nerd anyway. So I, I just, you know, I just wear eyeliner as a sort of to balance it out. <laughs> <laughs> now you were saying you love production and all those things i noticed you are you in like a legitimate studio right now well this behind me my wife is a voiceover actor so this is hers and i'm actually at her, at her studio mine has been taken apart and it's being rebuilt at the moment so oh nice yeah. mm. so, so this nice. is like where she's like she'll do voiceovers inside this box <sighs> And she has a com she has a computer that runs outside. That's what I'm using right now. I'm using her computer, but it's it's tethered into what she can see inside. So, so fancy, high tech. 
I know. I think we're all wishing we had like a nice setup right now. Like I, like my boyfriend, as we started, like came in and like plugged in our like front light because he's watching and he's like, oh, let me just, let me just fix it. Like hey, we need to <laughs> figure out a way to make these. We're all just figuring out how to do all this from home. Uh, and we will definitely. But it's great. You know, I mean, I've had a chance to do a couple of really cool production things and sing on some really cool YouTube things. We did a, um, there's a, a version of we are the champions that just went out, I think oh. last, last week for all it's, it, I was contacted because I had worked with this drummer and there's a filmmaker out of, I'm trying to think of where he's out of Connecticut. I think anyway, he, he asked me to sing this and cause he knew my relationship with queen and, uh, and it's basically a dedication for all of those people that are on the front lines who are really, you know, making a huge difference and sacrificing everything that they have for for people that are ill right now. It's a, it's a pretty powerful piece of footage. I mean, a lot of still images of just these vacant places like the Vatican and the Louvre and um, just with no people in them. And then you it sort of transposes into images of, of people that are, you know, really in the trenches and helping people. It's pretty spectacular. The American Idiot one you did too was really cool. Ah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many like things like that happening right now where we're all just kind of able to collaborate in ways that we're not always able to, like with scheduling and not being in the same place. Uh, yeah. Everyone's getting a little bit more creative right now, um, which is been- You wonder long how, <clears throat> excuse me, you wonder how long this kind of creativity has to be the mainstay, you know? I know. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm hoping not too long, but it's yeah. good. I don't know. I don't know. I know. <clears throat> Annie, those are such beautiful flowers behind you. Thank you. I was positioning my computer so you could see them. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, where are you at? I'm in Brooklyn. I'm always in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> we love Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. If I'm not at Sardis. <laughs> <laughs> are you miss? Are you missing the actor menu? I'm missing hugs. I have a, a, a themed posting uh, series on my Instagram uh, at the Annie Golden and it's hashtag I miss hugs and Aww. passion. So I'm posting, I'm posting pictures of people hugging, whether it's my family or celebrities or, you know, opening Whoa. nights or whatever. I'm posting photographs just of people hugging. I just, I miss that. So that, that's, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I miss, I totally miss it. I, I totally miss, um, you know, just being at the bar and I know everybody there. And um, between Sardis and 54 Below, I could be like a bag lady who lives there all the time. <laughs> you know, people are like, that lady's here all the time. And it's like, no, I'm just so go on in a minute, you know, so. Yeah. I know, I miss, I miss our haunts. Now, being home, we're we're with our neighbor. We're around our surroundings a lot of time. Anyone have any good neighbor stories? Annie, you have a good neighbor story. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Today is her birthday. Actually, she turns oh. eighty nine. Oh wow! And you wow. saved her life. So tell um, everyone about shall it. I, shall I say? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, yeah. It's um, I you know been in my building for decades, and um, one of my neighbors who today turns eighty nine. Um, I would look in on her occasionally, and um, I when I would go to to the supermarket, um, I would do two lists. I would get uh, a sales list, and I would get my list, and I would go and fill my shopping cart to to the max because she cooks at home i don't so it was mostly her list anyway um easter sunday i was with my family having a home cooked meal and uh, my sister lives 20 minutes within walking distance of me and she's there with her in the backyard so we can barbecue so nice. so nice so i get a text from estelle's daughter saying and her daughter's her daughter's in arizona and I get a text saying, have you spoken to mom today? Uh, she's not answering the phone. So I run home 20 minutes. Um, I ring the bell. I have my keys. I 
can open the door. The door is bolted from the inside. I hear phone ringing and not being answered. So I call the super and the super says, um, it's bolted from the inside, so the keys aren't gonna do you any good. Well, why don't we go up to the neighbors above? I'll introduce you now. We're both we're both in masks and gloves. You're not supposed to be with people, and now right. I'm introduced to my neighbors above Estelle. And uh, <laughs> the super the super rings the bell and says, Listen, um, we have an emergency. Your neighbor downstairs, we need to get in. Can she come in and climb through the window and go down the fire escape? Oh my God. So I'm I into my seat. Edge to cross. Climb down the fire escape. I, uh, the, luckily, the window is not locked. And I opened the door and. Um, and I opened the window and I climbed in saying is her legs moving. So I was like, Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, okay. And so she had suffered a stroke. Oh my god. Oh my god. In the night. Yeah. So um so I called her daughter back and said, I'm in. Meanwhile, my my super was at the door banging and ringing. She wanted to know what had happened. I opened the door. I say to her, she goes, Is she up? I said, Yeah, she's up. So she left. So I called the daughter in Arizona. I called 911. I thanked them for being there. I called the 911 dispatch. I called the EMT dispatcher. I was uh, wow. I, I was switched to her. I thanked her for being there. They sent an ambulance. Um, I packed her bag with her wallet, her phone, her dentures, her bridge, her meds. It was it was it was crazy. And then when I sent her off, and she was safe and sound, and we caught her in time because she's at a rehab now in Westchester, and today is her 89th birthday. Ugh. But I just sat on my couch and had a good Easter Sunday cry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Oh, thank, my God. I know. Thank, thank God you were able to get in. Yeah. Yeah. It was, well, you know, because my soup, I, I couldn't think of anything. The door, I couldn't open it. My super didn't want me to call 911 because she has to answer to the landlord. And yeah. she said, no, they'll yeah. break they'll break the door. And I'm like, yeah, we'll break the door. And um, mm -hmm. he said, why don't I introduce you to the people upstairs? And you go into their apartment. And so heroes, heroes all around. And, um, and Estelle is 89 today. And she's going through rehab. And yay, Estelle. Happy birthday, Estelle Pachter. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> And if people are surviving COVID at 103 and 108, then Estelle is a youngin. Seriously. <laughs> In she absolutely. She just had a stroke, so she'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that she's okay. Yes. And yeah. ha happy birthday. Have any of you have any of you ever had to climb through your um, neighbor's apartments to get to I have. I've had yeah. to go into my you neighbor's have apartment. To I have my my door just stopped, just, um, it, it never locked itself. And then one day I was doing laundry down in the basement and I closed the door and I couldn't open it. It was locked. It's just like old door. So I knocked on my neighbor's door. Luckily I was pretty friendly with them, but I was like, can I climb through your window and <laughs> climb into my apartment? <laughs> I, I have a story. So Rebecca Naomi Jones, who plays Lolly in Bleeding Love was my roommate for a few years. And I love her to death. I love her. Yes, we were roommates. No way. Yes. We were <laughs> Why roommates. I didn't know this till now. Sorry. You know, we were roommates. We laughed and laughed and laughed. But she got locked out of the house. And like our, we never gave the key to our super or anything. And so she had to go upstairs through the neighbor's house. And then the super had to break into our security gates. And oh, into no. the window for her to get back in. And still to this day, there's a, uh, it's a heart shaped Rebecca love uh, on my window. Amazing. Because of Rebecca, who I love. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Uh, yeah, it's just, you gotta do what you gotta do to get into yeah, your- you gotta get back in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I've actually learned how to break in. If the bolt's not done, I've learned how to do the credit card. So now I'm kind of like, oh. I'm very like a thief in the night now. I know how to do that on doors now. So it's a strange talent that I have. 
But also I recommend, so in New York, I don't know about where everyone else, but there's a service called Kimi and they're not sponsors, but they, <laughs> they, they have- will talk to them about it. Yeah, they, right. have, they have little, um, they have little kiosks and what you do is you like, when you make a copy of your key, you also like create a profile and it saves oh. your key so that you could go to a thing, log in, and then be like, print my front door key or like print my deadbolt key. That's a great idea. Mark. Just smart. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna one up that because I'm in the suburbs and I was telling you guys about my kids and we were like very tired of my kids like not having keys or losing keys and blah blah. So we finally got a punch in keypad. Yeah. So it's yeah. like they literally Ooh. only have to remember the keypad and they can get into the house. It's I made mean, life a lot easier. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Like so many, a lot less keys. To... You cannot do that in New York City, though. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. No. Maybe if you I, have I like, an entire it. brownstone. Right. Or something. But yeah. um, you know. Anyway. Um. Well, we we hope to get Annie back, but um, we st we start every interview at Equity One by asking our guests what first got them interested in the arts when they were uh when they were young people. So I, let's just try and go down the line. Let's start with Katie. What got me interested in the arts? I don't know. I mean, I grew up. I I grew up outside the city, so we went to a lot of Broadway. And I um, recently have been trying to remember, like, what was my first Broadway show, and how, like, how did I get interested in arts? But um, my mom had girls, and she told us that girls don't play sports; we dance. So we all danced, oh. and. Did a lot. Of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What it's other? true. I hope she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I always thought I wasn't an athlete until I sort of became one as an adult. Um, yeah. And uh, we danced and we saw a lot of theater. And uh, that was, I think, how I became interested in the arts. What was the first like cast recording that like rocked your world? So. I, I I mentioned this recently too. Like I just pulled out my um, my published book that I wrote in third grade. That's called I Can Make It to Cats, and awesome. it's a play that I wrote, and I directed my friends in it. And like I can really picture my elementary school downstairs and the audience and my friends performing this play that I wrote. I mean, I, I was in third grade and I have the book now sitting on my desk, like reminding me of my, like what brought me here. That's oh my God. Awesome. That's amazing. cute. I love that. Yes. Produ producing from the very beginning. Yes. Totally. And I don't uh, think, yeah, I'm always a behind the scenes girl for sure. Put it all together. Uh, Annie, what about you? What first got you interested in the arts when you were young? Um, oh, geez. Uh, well, my influences are um, uh, Judy Garland, uh, uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, David Bowie. Uh, so it's all those, uh, those pop artists who do uh, straight film and musicals and concerts. And um, so it was. It was that. I mean, it was really just you know, uh, loving Judy Gar Judy Gar the Judys, the Judys Garland, and <laughs> Russell. I think that was in my first, my first bio, my Broadway bio. Uh, which was the revival of hair mm -hmm. in uh, 1977 <laughs> um, at the Biltmore Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, it said, you know, and, and Annie loves the work of the Judy Garland, Holiday, and Miss Rosalind Russell. Oh my God. I love that. So, uh, yeah, it was just we were pop stars, and they did crossover stuff. Yeah, and that that there was so a there was so much in, there was in, so much crossover in, then, um, so much like that. yeah. 
Yeah, so much like a uh, musical theater stars, yeah. these big mu musicians, these jazz artists that did movies and had number one hits. It's when you know, you know, a Broadway tune would be would be like a, a household hit, yeah. you know. So, I, um, Tony, what about you? Um, I was I was four and I heard a Beatles record. My dad had yeah. a pretty pretty big vinyl collection and. I heard Hard Day's Night, and I was like, whatever this is, whatever this is, I want to be a part of. And so when I was young, I used every avenue that I could to perform. So I was, I was a singer when I was really, really young, and I started taking drums when I was about seven. But I wound up using any stage that I possibly could to be a better communicator. I don't think I was conscious of that per se, but that got me involved in musical theater. So I was doing, you know, rock and roll and like Battle of the Bands. But at the same time, I was doing community theater and civic light opera and, and that sort of thing. So um, to me, um, it was like nothing was. My God. <laughs> Katie's mom saw me do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's okay. She wrote LOL too. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> At least she's supporting me now. <laughs> okay. so, Look, you never know who's tuning no. in. No, All right. No, right. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was interesting. Like, no, no. because you. Tony, you and Annie actually kind of have similar kind of uh, stories in that you started in bands making music and then and then that led into a more like theatrical career. I think it's, yeah. that's a really interesting um, like, path. You know what? I don't know if Annie will agree with me on this, but I think there's something and this isn't to poo poo people who don't who aren't musicians, but I think something happens when when you play an instrument that you you're connected with the music at a much deeper level. Hmm. It's yeah. it's not just a lyrical thing. It's yes. not just a story. It's it's a yeah. much deeper grounding foundation of of a musical understanding of a feel. Yes. That, that, do you know what I'm saying, Annie? Yes. And you're, I think you're, you're you're participating. You're invested in a different way. And yeah. I don't play an instrument, so. Yeah. So I understand what you're saying as far as theater is concerned. Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and I'm not poo-pooing anybody who doesn't, but I think yeah. that's what that's what makes that's what made the like I think the cast of American Idiots so so special is that so many of us were musicians. Yes, that it was unapologetically rock and roll because mm -hmm. that's what we all do when we're not on a Broadway stage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I immediately think of someone like also like. Lena Hall that like is just like Absolutely. a like I, I just think there's something in that like not only that like connection that you have with the music but also you're able to like hold a room of any size if you're like a, a musician in that sense like and it's a different thing but it communicates really it translates really powerfully in theater yeah it's a funny, um, Le funny that you bring up Lena we're both uh, the two of us are the the voices of the dog gone band in a animated show called Nature Cat. Oh, so go check it out. okay. Lena was on the original demo of Bleeding Love. I did know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's a small world. It's yeah. the smallest world. Um, <laughs> Harris, what about you? What first got you interested in the arts? So I wanted to be an astronaut, and then the Challenger exploded. So I was like, "That's not gonna work out." Um, wow. And so then I was, yeah. And so then I, um, I wanted to be a ballet dancer in like second grade. I wanted to be the next Barishnikov and no one really helped me. So I was like, uh, I guess I'll be an actor instead. Huh. Um, and so in fourth grade, I decided I want to be an actor and that's what I did and pursued for a really long time. Um, and so I always wrote- a, Oh, you're such a great director. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I wrote since I was a kid and I, um, I've always sort of, written and acted and directed and produced and and sort of been my sort of life's journey um and growing up we had two cast albums one was annie and one was hair and so hair was like my big obsession and was my dream and in my early 20s i ended up being clawed and the actress funded a one night only concert of hair um where i was clawed and that's where i met annie 
No way. Yes, and Annie's been in a ton of my work over the years. Um, and yeah, that's how we met is through hair. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I feel like yeah. those moments happen all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, Steve was talking about going to see the shirts and, you know, now working with Annie on this. And we all, I feel like we all kind of have those moments, especially like, you know, I think that what's important for anyone that wants to pursue a career in the arts is that you have to just kind of follow your own, you know, you got to stay your own course and do the things that are like ringing ringing right with you and that's going to bring you the kind of people that you want to work with which are probably oftentimes the people you've looked up to or you know have been a part of the things that have inspired you um oh, so yeah. i think that that's something that is always good to remind everyone mm -hmm. uh, if they're interested and not even just in the arts that's just like life you know like attracts like yeah mm -hmm. yeah well, I want to talk about bleeding love a little bit, and uh, you know, I want to talk. What what was the? How did that whole process begin? Like, start us from the very beginning. So the very very beginning was uh, so Jason Schaefer, who's the book writer. He um, he had been writing. He is, he gave himself an assignment of where he was writing down a list of like everything emotional, just like random images, and he. Um, and he and I knew each other because I was in his work as an actor. He is a playwright. Um, and so um, Arthur and I, Arthur Bacon, who wrote the music to this, he and I had written this other musical, Salvage, um, that Annie actually was on the demos for and Rebecca was in a concert of. Um, and Jason loved it and we decided we wanted to write something together. And he pitched me Bleeding Love, this, this idea idea that he had which i was not sure that i wanted to write at the time like a year later I ended up coming back and be like what was that thing with the rose um <laughs> and so then he he sent it to me sent me this like 20 page document with all of these ideas and he and i um i worked with him to sort of narrow it down you know and he i just asked him questions until he himself narrowed it down um, into something that was like ready to go before we wrote any music because the biggest flaw I would say of any like musical theater writing is that you don't figure out the book before you start writing the music because once you write music you're you're fucked yeah. you know what I mean like it's really hard to change especially if the song you should have written is like five percent different mm -hmm. right it's like the idea should have been just like this and it's impossible to rewrite so what you got to do is you got to fi figure out the book first so we did um, and then um, we wrote the songs and then we um, very quickly got into NAMPT right after we had written it. And so did a concert there and Sarah Stiles was, played the same role in NAMPT. And then over the years it's been developed at these different places. And then um, a few years ago, so we had this big production in Denmark. And so we took the orchestra tracks from that production and did an American um, demo with this wonderful cast that we have with Tony and Annie and and everyone, and um, and so we had this phenomenal demo, and then when this uh, COVID happened, we were like, okay, this is the time for Bleeding Love, a musical about uh, you know a, a world that's so too dangerous that you can't go out of your apartment, and um, and so we asked our cast, you know, the same cast from the demos, like, are you available to record the demo? And they were like, we're available. <laughs> <laughs> and then it moved really fast. Yeah, I mean, it was so, like yeah. it was like Broadway shut down on March 13th, and we were recording by March 28th. Like yeah. it was like 10 days later, we wow. were recording yeah. and moving this forward. Yeah, but we did a whole we had, did an entire day rehearsal process, and then an entire day recording, and then there was a bunch of pickup pick days and. Um, and it was crazy because it's over this of where like the sync is off, right? Like none of this mm -hmm. is yeah. actually in sync. And so um, I directed it, but I also edited it because it just was a sprawling nothing, yeah. right? Um, that needed to be put together in, you know, as the actors, because my background is an actor, I teach acting, like all this stuff. I'm able to channel like what the actor meant as far mm -hmm. as their timing, you know? And so that's why it sounds so good is actually because I was able to just respect their initial intention, um, which was not there because of how it was recorded. It just was random tracks, you mm -hmm. know? 
it's so so huge like such a big undertaking i think like uh, first of all i quick like logistics question how long from when you first were like what remind me that about that idea with the rose to like the production in denmark and then so, to now uh 2010 was hey what was that rose thing uh NAMPT was 2012, and then Denmark production was 2015. We did these demos, I think, in 2016. Wow. And then here we are. Yeah. So and for then, those for those of you who, who are not good at math, that's like 10, 10 years. years. <laughs> 10 years. Long time. Right. And, we, and were, we were at good speed. We were, I mean, we were at Amos. We did a lot of, there was right. a lot of development. Yeah. Um, Katie. Sorry, well, Katie. what I was going to say is like the, so like I ran I ran into Harris last summer at the now sadly deceased Nymph and um and the general manager for the show that I was working on sort of like turned to Harris and was like what happened to that musical you were working on and Harris said to me Kitty I really think you would like this musical so it was like August mid August he and I met to talk about like what what the show was and I immediately fell in love with the show and I was like Harris we're making this show happen <laughs> and um we like we yes. you know we started meeting with general managers we started like sort of looking at what the show would be and then we were so blessed to have Kent Nicholson and Steve Separito come on board and work with me as producers and we sort of became this team and um and we were like and and about mid-February, we started talking about like a concert version. Do we want to do a 54 below? Like, how do we get people to hear this incredible project without like doing another developmental piece because it really doesn't need development? It's a finished musical. Right, right, right. Um, March 5th, I met with Alan and it was basically like, I love musicals. I love podcasts. How can we work together? And he was like, well, we really want to do a musical podcast. And I was like, huh. And then I call, like I, we had a conference call. I talked to the guys. I was like, uh, we have this option to like explore. And then Harris and I were on the phone. I think we spoke to Alan and Dory before the Broadway shutdown. I think we spoke to them we, like March we did, 10th. We did. And I was like, I don't know. I'm old school. I'm old. Do people do that? And then as soon as COVID happened, it was like, let's do that. And now yes. we did. Yes. <laughs> And I'm we've been we've been so <laughs> blessed by the Broadway Podcast Network. They've yeah. been complete. They completely made the whole thing happen. They like sent mics to everyone's homes. They did all the teching. They did like they they've obviously done all of our distribution. They you know they've been incredible partners for us. And so and as you guys know, like they're great partners. So yes. um, you know we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. And now everyone around the world and we've had fan art from Belgium. Like, can you so hear cool. our musical? So cool. yeah. Amazing. That's so cool to get to like have that reach. I know that like that's the gift of this time that we're in is to be able to connect in ways that we hadn't before with all kinds of people from everywhere. Um, what was it like once there was this, you know, idea to do this as a podcast, Tony and Annie, what, what were the challenges in doing this musical making this happen with your characters from home remotely you know not in a room with the energy of the your fellow performers i mean what was that like tony <laughs> i think though we just for for some clarification we did like like harris already said we did have a rehearsal process so we had this sort of rekindling of what we had prior, you know, done prior in the studio yeah. and that sort of thing. And then to experience it on a screen to me, and I'm speaking, you know, on my own perspective here and, and how it felt, it was like we were all in the same room. Yeah. I just had the, you know, a comfortable chair to sit on instead of like a, a really cold <laughs> you know, flu fluorescent lit rehearsal room. But it, <laughs> but it felt like we were all on the same page. And, you know, Harris is such a gifted director for some reason, you know, it just didn't feel removed to me. And his, his, because he knows the intent of the actors and God bless him for being such a great editor as well. Um, it was, it was a very cohesive, easy yeah. situation apart from the delay in, in recording and some technical stuff that, that, you know, we had to deal with apart from that, it felt incredibly synergistic in my opinion. 
it's just how it felt from from an actor's yeah. perspective. Annie, what are your thoughts? She agreed with everything I just said. Yeah, every single thing. Every single thing. Now's the time to say more things for her to agree with. Yes. <laughs> um, Annie, yeah. Annie has um, run up a little bit into this during our recording, and she's been an incredible, like, just go with the flow, figure things out. Figure. She's now a tech genius. She loves her Yeti <laughs> mic. Not to speak for yeah. you, Annie, but <laughs> so, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, uh, 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 aside from uh, our, our brilliant engineer Alan Seals, I just. I, Everything you said. Great. Johnny. Everything. <laughs> well, I, I want to talk. I want to, um, I'm going to ask a question and then I'm actually going to bring in Alan to kind of like round table this because I want to hear about the. Um, <laughs> I was not like, yes, yeah. <laughs> I want. I want to. Um. I want to hear about the process of. You know. You decided it's happening. You're gonna make it work. You get mics to everyone, and then putting it all together. Um, in post and kind of making this thing happen all together. I think it's something that we're all kind of figuring out. It's a new thing for everyone. So, Alan, pop us out, and I want you to talk with the team about that kind of process. Your involvement. Podcast at Alan's. Hi. Hi. Oh, this is Rose. A nice tattoo. Rose tattoo. This is, oh, wait, I gotta uh, unmute that so I can see my head. Um, Actually, Elliot, I'm gonna bring you back in. Give me a okay. question. Um, What were, this, this is something that you said the podcast network wanted to work on and branch out into. What did you, what was that process like for you? You know, you're used to producing a more kind of interview type thing like yeah. what was it like to produce an entire musical podcast experience it it was fun and challenging uh for bpn it was it's something that we've been talking about for a long time is getting into um original content and because and it's like what podcasting is doing in general out in the world is is bringing back kind of the golden age of radio where families would sit around you know a long time ago and just couldn't wait for War of the Worlds to come on. And some right. people thought it was real. And there's there's this sort of um, of nostalgia that, that we wanted to bring back in the form of radio plays. And on top of all that, being a lover of theater, and then of course, Dory Berenstein, co-founder, partner, um, like she and I really, really, we talked about this a lot and we're like, it's, it, it seems like a kind of a no brainer in this day and age now with the technology and with the, with everything that's out there to start developing shows in podcast form. And then like, look at the success of Be More Chill, look, look at, at Six, the musical, um, and the Lightning Thief, uh, Percy Jackson, the Percy Jackson musical, uh, all of these things basically got stage life, big stage life because of an online internet following that exist that pre-existed the Broadway runs. Mm -hmm. So why not take that one step further and start it as a podcast? Because if we can workshop it, we see what works, we get feedback and and put it out there in the world and let let people like who don't have access to theater, who don't have access to new, to come to New York, be able to listen to this and to access it. It it just it seemed like the logical next step. Did I answer your question? Yes, I think so. I mean, did you face any like unique challenges like for the next big hit musical that you help produce for the Broadway Podcast Network? Like what have you learned? And uh, that could be for everyone. That could be for Katie and Harris as well. Like and Tony gets, and Andy, gets, like what? He gets 8% is what the deal is. <laughs> <laughs> what did you what did you learn from the process that cuz we're all figuring out how we are doing our you know how we're creating how we're doing things in this kind of temporary new normal right and so a lot of those things we're going to carry forward so what did what did you learn from from the this process well, i learned very quickly there's no one size fits all um case by case basis uh you know being being sort of the the overall 
you know, you, you give me the podcast dad credit, being being the father of the podcasts. Uh, everything, everybody likes to work in slightly different ways. And it's different when you're not going into a physical studio, which we still have that hasn't been used in months now, right? So can, allowing us to find a multiple workflows for multiple people that will allow them to continue to to record and to produce was a challenge in and of itself. And so through all of that, like we've got several different platforms, StreamYard included, which is what we're we're using right now to serve yeah. out to all of our destinations. And there's a, there's actually new technology that I still haven't that, I, that maybe we'll switch to that I'm still testing out. And it depends. Like Tony is very good technically. He he's got the voice. He's got the mic set up already. His, his wife's got the sound studio. That's why like, I so also I use this mic specifically did it because I want Neumann to endorse me. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's zoom more zoom time, in, Tony. <laughs> zoom right yeah. in. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so like Tony is coming from uh, a background of, of like literally we just sent him the script and we said, all right, we're going to record VO and he goes, cool. And then there's uh, people in the middle, there's people on the other end who have never held a, a USB mic before right. and didn't know where to plug it in or how to change the settings. And and we were also trying to, to merge, uh, to get... Um, Multi-track audio, which is very important because you want everybody on their own track while still being able to see people's faces because that's how you can better act with people is you right. can, if you can actively listen and see their faces. So it was this wonderful challenge to be able to find the technology to give us the audio quality that we needed while giving us the video that we needed to get the performances out of what Harris wanted. And yeah, moving forward. Uh, it's my the ramp up speeds a lot shorter, but I know exactly how we'll do it next. So super easy. I love that. Katie, what about we, you? Well, I think we were really blessed to have the um, tracks and the music pre recorded. I think one of the things that we're seeing in this COVID age is a lot of technology issues in terms of music playing music and singing along to it. And you certainly can't, you, it's very difficult to do it live and, yeah. and complicated in terms of um, not doing it live either. <laughs> so I think that was the, I think the biggest thing that propelled us forward and was able to move so fast was that we had the music already and we didn't have to record it. Um, I think that, you know, future musical podcasts will still need to probably go into a studio and record the music so that the quality of the sound is really amazing. I mean, we certainly got good sound quality in our uh, dialogue from uh, recorded homes, but I would, I think that, you know, hopefully we'll be able to return to a studio setting and in that I think will be a better environment for recording the music. Yeah. yeah. We had to, we had to record two reprises, um, uh, which were both very difficult, but also um, Rick Schnupp was the mixer and he did the sound design and Rick won an Emmy this year for free solo. He did Midsommar. He did the sound for my film beauty mark. And so I knew like he would be able to fix anything. And so um, there was a lot of trouble in recording actual singing that he fixed. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it sounds so beautiful, you know, Rick, where it just put like a- It really does. Off. Yeah. Um, but so I think it's the combination of like, Alan did a great job in actually recording it. And then Rick um, he put this like super glaze on it. And it's a combination of those things. Um, I think, so you need a really, you need someone who really knows how to mix and really knows how to master um, for it to really sound like how this sounds. Yeah. Tony, did you learn, did you learn anything from this process? No, <laughs> not, not one thing. <laughs> Actually, someone touched on something. I think you had mentioned something, Alan. Forgive me if, if, if it was you, Elliot or Alan, but you know, what was the deal with, you know, sort of playing off of someone's visual and how important that was. And I'm going to just say, I'm going to beg to differ on that slightly because as an actor, your responses are only authentic if you're hearing what, this, what the person is giving you. And so in that aspect, to me, it was a great reminder of, listen, listen, hmm. listen, what is she giving me? What it, 
is my is my you know my response authentic or am i just saying a bunch of lines you know mm -hmm. and so to me not having a visual was a big help because it really made me hone in on what that person was giving me so that my response was authentic if that makes That's, sense yeah i mean that it's, i think that is totally like hit the nail on the head amazing like reminder for all of us i think what we're all finding i speaking for myself in this time is like when everything is kind of like stripped down bare bones, like this is your day-to-day -day existence without your kind of creature comforts and the things you do out in the world, you really like are like, okay, how do I operate just at base frequency, right? And base frequency acting is like listening and responding. Mm -hmm. and, and it that, all comes back to that. It always does. Otherwise, you're not going to give anything that, that the audience believes is believable. Yeah. yeah, it's also it's interesting too having that in mind because it is an audio medium. The odd, you know, you have the visual as an actor, but the audience doesn't have it. So if right. it it has to work audibly, also for it to translate. And I think that the the big story, the like the characters translate really well, and the heart of the story really is translated very well in this in this podcast. So three kudos, things. So I think yeah. I think I think it's believable text number one a, a ridiculous director and a really talented cast and if you have mm -hmm. tech if you have all of those things that, yeah. that if you just have believable dialogue in general <laughs> you already have a leg up because how many musicals or even straight plays do you go really like, and you say like she wouldn't have said that mm -hmm. she wouldn't have said that that this conversation doesn't seem visceral authentic real yeah. legit whatever you want whatever you know adjective you want to place on that um and i think you, that's why this thing reads so well off of a speaker is yeah that the text is so good and our cast was so really you know present and talented mm -hmm. and and then you have harris who's who's guiding the ship and you you almost can't fuck it up i mean i have to say the um the six of you were committed as if it wasn't somehow only radio or something. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? I think that that, where they took it seriously, like we are actually acting, this is actually a play and we are actually Absolutely. doing this. Totally. Emotionally, everything, right? Um, believing the circumstances. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, these things that are happening, the like Sondheim birthday and all this stuff, and you see yeah. very, very talented people and different degrees of how far they're going to truly commit to actually Kelly O'Hara every time is giving you full stage, unbelievable, yeah. right? Believing every circumstance. She doesn't care that she's in her living room. She is giving everything. And you see different degrees of how much people are truly willing to commit in that circumstance or not. And it's not about their talent. It's about their willingness to commit, right? Totally. And so Absolutely. it's interesting to see that scale of like from Kelly O'Hara to unnamed person. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we all strive to be Kelly O'Hara. Kelly O'Hara, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly O'Hara is one of my favorite blonde girls. You know who else is one of my favorite blonde girls? Caleb, can you pop back in? <laughs> that, was, that was a skilled transition. That was a great was transition. Thank you. I'm You've a, never said that before. I'm, I'm an experienced broadcaster. <laughs> You're doing amazing. Thank you. Well, to set this up a little bit while we wait for Caleb, um, Caleb is you know, fancies himself, sees himself as a blonde girl from Ohio. And that's just part of his identity. And uh, we have you a segment. Why. You do? Yeah, yeah, it's ironic. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it, it makes sense, the connection that you all had right away. Um, <laughs> that, uh, so Caleb has a segment where he talks about um, his thoughts on a really random topic. Uh, and so we're going to have a blonde girl moment right now. I love that. Can we uh, hit that theme song while we wait for Caleb? Is he gone? Alan um, said he was having internet issues, so I wonder whether that is something yeah. that we're hearing yeah. right now. Is this, a, is this, this like what we were talking years? about, about broadcasting from home? Like, it's it cannot replace us forever. We're I figuring think it out. I also think, like, in terms of internet connection, like, there is a difference. Ah, there he is. Am I back? Caleb's here. Hey, Caleb's uh, here. I'm in. I'm back. Okay. Uh, can you can you hit that roll that beautiful bean footage? Wait, which one? Blonde girls? Bl yeah. Blonde girls. Maybe I'd better go. Oh, age I own. Maybe 
I'd better go home. Hey. Okay. So when I was listening to the um, Bleeding Love this week, in the first episode, it was um, a whole a bit of the song was about canned food. So that really got me thinking about um, being in Ohio at my grandma's house. In the basement, there was always green beans, like in the glass jar. Um, and um, a mix of other vegetables, always canned and ready to go. So I started thinking about the best canned food, in my opinion. This is an opinion piece. Um, is Bush's canned beans. Iconic. Number one, canned food. I loved getting it in my thermos in middle school with a bit of a hot dog. So that is my number one canned food. And now we're going to round robin and everyone's going to say their number one canned food. Before we Ellie, do, yes. Before we do, can I just, can we just tell the people that we, Caleb and I, did not talk about what he was going to talk about. And what did I say before this? But roll that beautiful bean footage. I mean, we are we are connected. Okay. Anyway, yeah. that's <laughs> yes. That's why we host the podcast. Anyway, yes. So, will, um, do you want me to start? Go for, yes, please go. I'm a, I'm very partial to a canned pineapple slice. Oh, round or chunk? Round. Got to be round. Round, so you can just plop it on your plate. Maybe put a, a spoonful of, of cottage cheese on top. Yes. Mm. Do you pepper yeah. your cottage cheese? Um, it depends. Not with a pineapple, no. <laughs> Not necessary. Okay. Yeah. Tony, canned food number one. What is it? Does does almond butter count? Is that a can? That's like a. Jar. Jar. It's plastic, yeah. right? Jar, yeah. That's not. That's it's got to be in t like tin. <clears throat> <laughs> it's really hard it is hard because i don't eat a lot of canned foods but i remember as a child those vienna sausages yeah, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. there was something quite special about that so i'm gonna i'm that's where i'm going delicious okay. yeah mm -hmm. all right harris spaghettios okay. and, yeah. and as, a, as an adult in quarantine there are pasta rings that are organic from whole foods not that i'm eating them but i do have a bunch of cans in my kitchen <laughs> now, now, do you go just SpaghettiOs or Spaghetti and Franks? So I've been a pescatarian for for a year now, so no more Franks. No just, more Franks. Just okay. SpaghettiOs, yeah. Cool. Katie? I feel like I have to give a Bleeding Love shout out with canned fruit cocktail. Canned fruit cocktail. I mean, on. Fair enough. It's, it's like cocktail. with a little maraschino cherries in it. Yeah. I love the cherries. The cherries are yeah, always my see? favorite. Absolutely. Yeah, they're the best part. Yeah, Something about canned fruit seems just not right for me. <laughs> I my mine is is just baked beans. I can just eat that out of the. I'll just open the baked beans and my kids too with the oh, bacon yeah. in it. Yeah, like that's that's my go-to. It's so good, Kylie, my favorite. So I'm glad we all agree on besides Tony that we love the good canned food every now and then. <laughs> You're in there. I, I, I have, it's okay because I like almond butter too. Thank yeah. you. I <laughs> love almond butter. I'll just love put it in a can. Have one other good canned <laughs> food recommendation. It is. Lasour peas. They're these sweet green peas oh. that are delicious. And they're in like a fancy sauce. They look can. fancy. They're like a fancy sauce. Yes, can. they are. I absolutely know what you're talking about. They're amazing. About. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. well, we, Adam, Adam from Call Me Adam uh, shouts out very important um, cranberry sauce, iconic canned food. Yes. Thanksgiving. You have to the, like the pour jelly. it out in the can so, like, so it still stays in the shape. Yeah. I have to yes. backtrack. I've got to backtrack. It's not the Vienna sausages, although I do, I'm partial to them. There's this Italian canned tuna that is, oh. I can't remember mm -hmm. who the producer is, but it's in this ridiculously fabulous olive oil. And it, I mean, you literally can eat it out of the can. A little yeah. salt. I believe, it's, I believe it's chicken of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> is it <this> not? <laughs> uh, Steve, Steve is Steve's saying, in. wait, yeah. can, we bring, can we bring in Steve to let yeah. him answer? Yeah, one second. Steve, Progresso we, Tuna. You're talking about Progresso <laughs> Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. All right, you can kick me out now. <laughs> yeah, but Steve, I, I want, want to know what your favorite canned food is. <laughs> no, I, it would be, it would be uh, Pro Progresso Tuna. That's oh. why it's, it's, it's and like, that's what Tony yeah. was referring to? Yeah, I think, yeah, they have the best. Uh, I'm Italian. I'm I am as well. I, I am as well, Steve. Italian, That's why we get along. Italian kitchen. <laughs> And we always had Progresso tuna. It was the only tuna fish we had in the house. Mm. There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm putting it on my list. In olive oil. 
Yes, um, absolutely. Forget the water thing. Yeah, forget the non water nonsense. Thing. I, I lived no. in LA for eight years, and it was like incredibly hard to find. You'd have to go out to this like there was a deli in, an Italian deli in Santa Monica that yeah. uh, that had it. So every time I'd come home, I would bring two things back with me: Progresso can tuna. Oh, little pastina too. Like uh, they don't have pastina out there. Yeah. And uh, Taylor ham. I'm a big Taylor ham fan. Taylor ham's good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Meat, meat, not meat, for the pescatarians, meat, but yeah, you know. not for the pescatarians. But anytime you put meat in a burlap sap. It's so, <laughs> it's so yummy. Uh, All right, I'm going to go back. Watch. You can bring Tony back. <laughs> okay. Bye, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for the progresso. That, now, that's good. That's good to know. Yes. That good it, Italian tuna. Now I got to get some. Right. And now I'm like, wait, Omri's going to Whole Foods. I got to put it on the list. <laughs> order now. Um, um, let's keep the questions going, yes? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Kayla, Kayla's yes. going to do some rapid fire questions to, uh, uh -oh. to bring us home. So really quick, no thought necessary. Oh, wait, Arthur, sorry. sorry. Arthur, the composer, is listening, and he says, Peach Cobbler from Boy Scout Trips. <gasps> oh. In a can. Cobbler. Peach I do cobbler. Like, I do love a canned peach. Wait, there I it is. that. Oh. Everyone's oh. Okay. Yeah, that's to be uh, funny. Art, you should be on this. You should be on this call. Jenna. Yeah, why aren't you on this call? Yeah, Art, Art, you were invited a million times. Art, pop in. Come in. We'll, we'll Come pop in. We'll pop in. All right, I'm going gonna, gonna to send you the link. Okay. So these are just quick questions. Easy. No thought necessary. Um, after quarantine is finished, what New York restaurant are you dying to go to for brunch? We'll go Katie Harris, Tony. Oh, wait. I'm texting Art. Oh, Art says, Tony it, Harris. Art says it's amazing in the woods. So I think that means he doesn't have internet. Oh, um, sorry. No, so it. I only half heard the question because he's like texting. Me. Um, your um, New York restaurant that you want to go to for brunch after quarantine. Oh, I'm ready now. So, oh. so I love and love in Madison Park, and it's at risk. It is I've at risk. Heard it's at risk, and that's a that would that would be a killer for me. It's my top restaurant in New York. If uh, anyone, I'm, if anyone hasn't seen the like, what is it, eight days out or seven days out on Netflix? There's a it's a documentary series about seven days to the opening of the new Eleven Madison Park, mm. along with it, other other like big events. But the Eleven Madison Park episode is amazing. Mm. It's such a phenomenal yeah, it's restaurant. Great. It's, it's great, amazing. Yeah. And I when they came out with the new menu, when was that, Elliot? Like five years ago, something. Uh, I want to say re very recent. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I consider five years recent. Oh, oh, okay. Anyway, it's amazing. Hopefully, they'll survive, and then I'll go for brunch. I just saw an episode guys. of uh, Sex in the City at Eleven Madison Park. Mm. But that was old. That was a Danny the Meyer old, Eleven yes, Madison. Yes, but the, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> anyway, Harris. Uh, good enough to eat is the yes. best place in the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so good. I love it's that place. It's so good. I know. I've been there with Caleb. Yep. Yeah. So Strawberry butter. Lumberjack pancakes. Lumberjack, yes. Yes. Back when I ate bacon, but yes, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We went um, there with your mom. Yeah, we did. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Tony? Yeah, I love in Madison Park. I can't, I'm can't. i trying to think of like where would I go. I mean, I'm a kind of a frittata freak, so if you can like tip me off to a good frittata, I'm, I'll, I'll show up easy. <gasps> Hashtag frittata freak. Hashtag oh my god. Our favorite visitors. Special guest. Where is he yeah. gonna go eat, Alan? Oh now, where are you gonna go eat? Um let's see what he say, says. Say hello to the listeners. Nope, we're getting stink out. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. So we're we're trying to pass time, but I'm trying to make it I like, can't hear anything you're saying, by the way. He's okay. got the headphones on. <laughs> trying to um, pass time, but without uh, technology, would you rather pass okay. time with puzzles <laughs> okay. time to go down. Books, or drawing? What was puzzles. the last one? Dra drawing? Drawing, puzzles. like sketching. Oh, drawing. Oh. Yeah. My computer's sitting on top of my unfinished puzzle right here. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. How many pieces? This one's... Um, 750 because the last one we did was 300 and my son said it was too easy so we went up and I also have a thousand waiting for us Ooh. but because I'm so busy with the Broadway Podcast Network and Bleeding Love I haven't done anything to it <laughs> mm -hmm. that's Bleeding Love on the Broadway Podcast Network <laughs> sorry not sorry 
<laughs> Harris, oh, here, what about you? And he's back. So, Bye. so my boyfriend and I, we did a puzzle before this. It was like 300 and we had fun. And then we we bought a 500 puzzle, 500 piece puzzle. And then it was sat there for two months, like just kind of sort of being done. And then we put it away. We didn't finish um, it. So, so then you would go to reading? Yes, I'm going to choose reading. <laughs> I'm going to choose reading. Okay. Um, my boyfriend's a painter, and so like sketching is like his job, you know. So uh, sure, I'll, I'll go with the, I'll go with uh, reading. Reading. Yeah. Tony, Tony, what about you? I would I would say for me personally, reading. But um, my family is specifically my wife and my daughter are like puzzle freaks. Mm. I participate to kind of be with them, but it would not be my go-to thing. But we're like they're right. dealing with these freaking like fifteen hundred piece puzzles, and I'm wow. just I just kind of glaze. Very yes. advanced. And your daughter is like five, and she can five. She's, she's eight. Oh, she's oh. eight. But yeah. still, that's impressive for a fifteen hundred. Oh, she's puzzle. full on. She's no joke. Wow. So I'm I'm there more as a spectator than a participant. Yes, yeah, that. support. Annie, would you rather do puzzles, read a book, or do some sketching, drawing? Can she? <laughs> awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> But she always has like a great smile. Yes. She has the and best frozen, smile, like, the best attitude ever. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on. Okay. So or answer, um, answer in the chat, Annie. We'll speak for you. We'll yes. The, people. Um, the next question is your favorite spring flower, kind of like in the same bleeding love, that flower that you love to see in the springtime. Oh. Me again? Yes. Yeah, just lilac. Oh, beautiful. Yes. They smell Paris. amazing. And my I'm I have a ton right now. Wait, I'll be right back. You ask someone else. Hold on. Okay. Right. Tony, favorite spring flower? Spring flower. Gerber daisies aren't springish, are they? Not really. Mm -hmm. We'll no. take it. I don't know shit about flowers, so sure. <laughs> They're not. I, um, are they summer? Well, I'm a Gerber daisy freak. That's like. Uh oh, my, here comes his flower. Oh. oh. I've been working so hard on this, and I need to show it off to the it's world. Beautiful. You yes. put one ice cube in a week. No ice cubes. Oh, how do you? Do it's all backwards. Just, uh, just it's, backwards. It's, it's beautiful, right? And it keeps going. Look, there's more buds. It can't stop. The world, is the world is ending, but this this plant can't stop. It's so beautiful. Can't stop. I, stop. I oh, really wow. want to put in a like like a little flower box on my fire escape when I get back to New York, because I want I want lavender. God damn it! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We don't. Okay. We ha we have um, we have irises all over our yard. So I guess by default, that's when I know they're out. I guess spring has arrived. Spring. Yeah. Um, just two more questions. Last uh, second one is, um, what do you dislike most? Spiders, everything, snakes, or sharks? <gasps> Ooh. That's me, right? I have yes, the answer. Yes. Shoot, yeah. all of the above. Answer D. <laughs> um, but I would have to say spiders probably first. I hate spiders. Ugh. I hate spiders. Paris, I don't. I don't hate any of them. I have to say, I don't, I don't hate them. Patch an answer. I, yes. <laughs> um, I guess like what scares me the most? Is that maybe is that the question? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I guess like a surprise snake that you weren't expecting is pretty scary. Yeah, yeah. snake in the grass. Yeah. yeah let's go to let's go to Annie. What what do you what are you most afraid of? Spiders, snakes, or sharks? Um, I was just down in New Orleans doing a new series for Fox called Filthy Rich, and we were in the bayou at dawn, and I had done several takes of the scene. And I was okay. And then the makeup artist came in to like uh, wet my brow or powder my brow. And she saw a spider behind me and she said, oh. And I was like, no, no, that's set decoration. And then it moved. <gasps> yeah. so, uh, so I would not be on that set. No. So the takes after that freaking sucked because <laughs> there was a real spider dangling in front of my freshly powdered. <laughs> so yeah, oh I, would say, I would say spiders. Cause I think, I think snakes, you can 
you might see coming, but spiders are so, they're, they're so diaphanous. They're so creepy. Yeah, that, Annie, Annie, there could be a surprise snake. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, a surprise snake. <laughs> a I surprise snake. Well, I'm on board with that too. It's all <laughs> creepy. All no, creepy. <laughs> are creepy. Wait, Annie, while we have you, let's go back to the questions from earlier. Because I want, I want your take. Perfectly yeah. streaming now. Yeah. What? Annie, what's your favorite canned food? Canned food? Yeah, what's your favorite? Oh my God, I was just cooking this and <laughs> I, had, I had extra and I put it in a Tupperware and I went, okay, oh. this looks like dog food. What was, was it? it? What was it? Oh no! <laughs> and it was uh, so cool. close, so cool. close. Oh, corn beef hash. Corn beef hash. Okay, that's good. What? <laughs> I don't know even what was said, but I'm... it was corn. Corn beef hash. Corn beef hash. Yeah. Yeah. Corn beef hash. It's too cute. I can't it's handle amazing. it. I know, right? You can't. I was like, okay, this is like dog food. Okay. Corn beef hash. We need to upgrade Annie's Wi Fi. <laughs> Thank you. So can we get a GoFundMe for that? Yeah. Uh, Tony, what are you scared of? Which one? <laughs> I was uh, I was young in Galveston, Texas, and got um, pulled under by a really strong riptide, and kind of uh, like was missing for I don't know many a second from my father's. I a boog I slipped off a boogie board, so I have always been very scared of like ocean uh, stuff. Me too. Yes. If, if I was sense. in the water, so like I'd have to go with shark because I can. I get very angry when I see a spider, so and I and I can attack it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I physically get angry. Um, snakes, I don't know. I haven't really been a... I grew up in New Mexico, and we had snakes all over the place, so I'm not really <laughs> immune to it. But that that water, that Ash, water I disconnect know. thing, it's that so hell's under my feet. It's when you can't see. It's the scary exactly. part. It's, That's so, right. it's so deep, yes. You really should include jellyfish in this question. Jellyfish? Yeah. Yes. Uh, no. I, I would have chosen it. I would have chosen jellyfish. Because <laughs> yes. I relate to the ocean thing. I don't like water. No. Yeah. I don't either. I don't no. either. No water. I don't, I don't like sand. I like the water. I don't want to be at a beach. Yes. <laughs> okay. Like Wrapping it up, there's <laughs> always these moments in our job when we we had that moment you're like, I can't believe this is my job. Like I can't like you're so excited, you're upset. It's just that moment you were it's just like mind blown. I can't believe this is my job. When have you had that moment in your career? Katie? Mm. Oh wow. God, multiple times. But I guess I went to the Tonys a couple years ago but it probably six years ago now and um i got to be in the press room which was actually really fun because i um got to be with everyone at the tonys um and so uh that that was one of those moments where i was like wow this is my job and then i got to, went to the party at the plaza afterwards and the whole thing it was it was, it was really fun um and i look forward to many many more yes Cheers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Harris? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is the, the premiere of my movie at the LA Film Festival, like being there while it was happening, like was so extraordinary. Um, was like, I can't believe this is happening. Um, but another one, just to bring it back to Annie, was that night, the hair night with Annie on Broadway. Like, cause I was being basically this vehicle for other people to come out and sing. And so I was on stage the whole night often alone watching one amazing performer sing after the other in, in this huge Broadway house. And it was just an extraordinary evening that I couldn't believe the whole time was happening, including when Annie sang um, uh, Frank Mills. It was just yes. her and me on stage. Iconic. Yeah. Tony? Um, two, can I answer two? Yeah. Please. I think um, Fronting Queen, um, at Queen Elizabeth's Golden Jubilee. So I was, oh, I sent Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody with Queen and Phil Collins was playing on a second kit behind us and <laughs> and two, and 200 million people were watching. 
Yeah, that that was yeah. probably that was probably pretty big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But that might so, have been a moment. That was a moment. <laughs> uh, but so was opening night of Superstar, the revival of JCS. Mm-hmm. Uh, Web, Weber brought 160 people over from Really Useful um, because it was his first Broadway show, and it was it was an amazing th- this after party thing. They had like angels hanging from the Hammerstein Ballroom, like women, like or. just <laughs> all like just hanging from the ceiling. Just performers, and, like angel performers, like angels, just angels. Oh, they the were gig. real angels, Ellie. Yeah. They were, I, maybe, <laughs> they, maybe they were. He's a, he's quite a wealthy guy. He could he yeah. could do a lot. <laughs> he brought them in. Yeah, I mean, it was it was like a million dollar opening night party. Oh, right. I'm sure it was wow. it was glamorously cool. Anyway, those those are probably two. I mean, those are pretty huge. I and really want to hear what Annie's moment <laughs> is. I know. Yeah, totally. I know. I'm sure it's amazing. Absolutely. No, the career she's had, like, I want to know. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, while we're waiting for Annie to hopefully pop back on, where can people find Bleeding Love? You can find it wherever podcasts are found. So you can go to iTunes. You can go to Broadway Podcast Network. You can go, what is to this? BPN.fm oh, oh, oh. backslash oh. Bleeding Love. Yes, get a kitty. Yes. <laughs> But, but also, really, sorry. No, go, please also go to iTunes and because it's the only place that you can actually rate and review. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there, there really matters for for us in this stage to have people rate and review. Go to iTunes and do that. It's a and, huge, it's a huge help. You know, we always do our plea at the end of every episode for everyone to go you know, rate, give us five stars, write a review, subscribe on iTunes, but it makes a huge difference for podcasters. It's, it's the way that we kind of get bumped up in the algorithm and people can like get, find us more easily if we yeah. have those reviews that, sure. that help from yeah. everyone. So it's well, something that yeah. you know, while you're, while you're listening to Bleeding Love, you can go to Equity One, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> while you're listening and then you do the same thing for Bleeding That's Love. You know, no, you're no, no. Focus, app. focus. You got to be there in the world. You got to focus. Do it afterwards. <laughs> sure. There yes. Yes. There yes. <laughs> yeah. And I actually think, to be honest, I think there is a confusion. Like um, people with iPhones have a podcast app. Yes. As a, it's not your iTunes app. It's not your music app. Yeah. You have a purple podcast app on your phone. Depends yeah. on depends on your iOS version. Uh-oh. Yeah, fair Uh-oh. enough. Oh, fair enough. Bad. Because, uh, no, but well, you're right. No, it is. Yeah, thank you, Tony. You might yeah, you. like it because in the recent upgrade, uh, I think it was iOS 13. Don't quote me on that. I think it was the, the upgrade to 13. Apple, because of the success of podcast, Apple pulled podcast out of iTunes and made iTunes its own thing and podcast its own thing. Mm. It's now so what I it's I like to I music or music now. I think it's phone. just music and podcast. There's no iTunes anymore. Yeah, so and on correct. desktop too on your on OS and on your computer right. as well. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, there's no I in music, Tony. <laughs> there is in my house, Paris, <laughs> but there, but there is an I in bleeding love. Yes, and you can <laughs> find that wherever you get your podcasts. Um, I think let's go ahead and give everyone socials if they uh, care to give them uh, where people can find you and follow your adventures. Campfire uh, Films PR with a K. Campfire with a K. Campfire with a K. Films PR is usually where you can find me. But Bleeding Love Musical, please. Yes. I'm Harris Duran on Twitter and Instagram. And... It's Bleeding Love Musical on everything except for Twitter, Twitter which is Bleeding Love Muse, because it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. Twitter <laughs> is like always like really giving you blue balls with yeah. the hand. It's mm-hmm. like, come on. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, Tony. Um, my website's my name, TonyVincent.com. Um, I, my Instagram handle is the official Tony Vincent. I, I don't know what my Facebook or Twitter account username or whatever that you can search it's it's on my website if you want to get there yeah i'm sure if you search it you can find it but anyway. just go to that website yeah and uh the legend annie golden you can find at the annie golden on instagram at the very least and i'm yes. sure she has other channels there but check her out and we are we loved having her here and um 
we loved having all of you here. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday happy hour with us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was really right. fun. Yeah, It was really fun. It's our pleasure. You can find our podcast, Equity One, at Equity One Podcast on Instagram and Facebook and at Equity One underscore on Twitter. Send us an email at equity one podcast at gmail.com and let us know what you think. And as always, please rate and review, give us five stars. It helps other people find us as well. Elliot, yeah. where can we find you on the socials? You can find me at Elliot Maddox on everything. Caleb. You can find me at Caleb Dickey on everything. And until next time, cheers. Cheers. Yeah.